All right. So first off, thank you all for being here on time on the Sunday, which is not an easy task considering this is revision. Uh, my name is Rocco. I've been making music on the Nintendo Game Boy for about eight years. And uh, I will be teaching you guys about my favorite tracker today, which is really exciting. Um, I want to get one thing out of the way beforehand since we're at a demo party. Um, LSDJ does not, uh, is not suitable to enter the old school music competition since the music runs on the hardware itself and it requires you to press start and it doesn't allow a function to export it uh, in the form of a ROM. Uh, it's not allowed to compete in the old school music compo, which is a true shame, but you know, it's how it goes. Anyway, um, some other things. Uh, I handed out a cheat sheet to all of you, um, and it's, there's a, a more expansive one uh, that also mentions some uh, legitimate retailers for if you want to get your hands on an EMS cartridge. Tronimal, if you guys know him, he's rocking around, he uh, has a web shop, he also sells the cartridges that are used to run the software. And um, I also have a USB stick with me that contains like uh, the LSDJ manual, which is, I uh, recommend all of you just read through it once and try out the different effects and stuff because it sounds really, really boring, but uh, it can really help you out just uh, messing around with some very basic effects and stuff. So, um, what I'm hoping to teach you today in what is supposed to be a three hour workshop, but I think we'll manage a bit quicker, uh, is I want to get you guys up and running uh, as quickly as possible with LSDJ. Uh, I consider it to be one of the most accessible trackers. And uh, it can be a little bit daunting, like I was talking to Ace Man before, like uh, using Devil Mask or Fami Tracker or Pro Tracker, you have an entire keyboard in front of you. Now you're extremely limited with just a small amount of buttons and a very small screen. And some people get really frustrated and intimidated by that. So I'm hoping to teach you guys how to navigate the software, uh, how to start producing your own sounds, uh, introduce you to the technical limitations of the platform, and we'll see where we get. Like, I hope to uh, discuss the wave channel a bit more in depth, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, so, first things first, like I already got a question uh, about regarding the versions. Uh, there's a possibility that uh, the instrument screens for some of you will look different. Uh, I think it's from version 5.4 that they uh, modified the software a little bit, but it won't make too much difference if we're just covering the basics anyway. So, um, before we start, I think uh, it'll be appropriate to let you hear something that I made and uh, this is a very bad time for my controller to stop working. Bear with me. <laughs> okay, interesting. Okay, I have to reboot the emulator. So, uh, how many of you guys are familiar with trackers? Raise your hand if you're familiar. Okay. So, um, LSDJ is a pretty, pretty uh, standard tracker. It has the same layout, which you'll, f you'll probably recognize if you've ever used a tracker before. Uh, the LSD uh, LSDJ, or the Game Boy rather, has four channels. And uh, these four channels uh, consist of one pulse, or two pulse rather, a wave channel and a noise channel. So, keep that in mind with the demo that I'm uh, about to play. Let's hope the controller works. Nope, of course. There we go.
get the idea. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you, thank you, one person. Um, <laughs> so uh, this is the structure that I've been working with for the uh, past two, three workshops that I've been doing, and it seems to work out nicely. Um, I always start off talking about the um, the noise channel first. Um, Usually, I would start with a uh, talk about chiptune music and how its main appeal is working with very strong limitations. Um, you're all demo sceners or you're attending demo parties, so you know all about the charm of that. Uh, and I want to focus on the noise channel first because it's the most interesting. Um, don't uh, try and uh, get along on the Game Boy as quickly. I will uh, explain step by step. Uh, on the screen first, and then you'll be able to practice on your own, and if you have any questions, just let me know, and I'll get back to you. So, we have LSDJ over here. Can everyone see the screen, by the way? I'm not blocking for anyone. Okay. So, uh, these four vertical rows represent the four channels that we have to work with. So, whenever we want to insert a new pattern, uh, which is where we input uh, the song data, we press A twice. Now, if you press A once, uh, it will reuse the, the pattern that you uh, used previously, and that can result in you overriding uh, notes that you already wrote, and it can get very frustrating very quickly. So uh, I just want to point out that if you create uh, a new pattern, uh, don't use it in, make sure not to use the same number in a different channel, because you'll override or the sound will sound mess up. So, uh, navigating LSDJ is a bit weird, uh, but I want to point your attention to the minimap at the right bottom of the screen. You see the PSG. Um, LSDJ works with different s screens, and you can switch wi between those screens by holding select. I have my select mapped to my trigger on the, button, uh, on the controller. Uh, and press left, right, up, or down. And you'll notice that the minimap at the right bottom of the screen will move along with you. So whenever you get lost in screens, you can always just hold left and get, make sure to get back to the S, which stands for song screen. This is the song screen that we're working with. The song screen is mainly used to um, organize your track. So if we create a pattern, we can go into the pattern by holding shift and pressing right. So now we're in a chain. And I always have trouble explaining this, but this is the best explanation that I've uh, had yet. So a song, is always con uh, a song always consists uh, of different, different segments. Think an intro or a solo, or uh, you have some segments for background melodies. Uh, and you build those in here. And in the chains, we can create a phrase, again, using A twice, and tapping right hold it while holding select. Um, and now this is the phrase screen, and in the phrase screen we can input our notes. So basically a phrase, you can see it as a measure. So you have your one, two, three, four. And if you uh, press A in the notes, uh, the notes column, which is the far left one, you have the note column, the instrument column, and the command column. The command column we'll get to eventually, but leave that alone for now. So if you press A, you'll input notes. And if you hold A, and you press left and right, you can cycle between notes using left and right, and you can cycle between octaves using A and up and down. Now, it won't sound too diverse, because we're in the noise channel, and this uh, channel produces uh, static noise. I actually forgot to explain what the capabilities are of the different channels, so let me do that first. So the first two pulse channels create a pulse wave, uh, and it has a duty cycle, uh, well, three, three duty cycles. So it's great to write melodies in. If I, if I say a pulse wave, does everyone know what I mean when I'm talking about waveforms and stuff? OK, good. Um, so that's mainly used for melodies. And you have a lot of control on the volume, but your sonic, uh, sonic capabilities are a bit limited. So the third channel is, well, you have the two pulse channels, and they're basically identical, except the first pulse channels has a sweep command. Um, it'll make sense when I start talking about it. It's hard to explain uh, briefly. Anyway, moving on to the wave channel. Uh, the wave channel is by far the most interesting and powerful channel, uh, but it's also the most complicated to use, because it's basically a synthesizer. Um, it also has sample playback. 
so you can import your, your 420 MLG uh, samples in there, compress them heavily and they come out completely shit, but they uh, do contribute to like the nice raw aesthetic of the Game Boy. So uh, the Wave Channel has a bit more limited volume control as well. We'll get to that eventually, that will be our last step. Uh, and first let's uh, go to the Noise Channel because we're going to work with assignments, yay! So. Uh, what I want you to do is we're going to work towards having you create your first drum loop because I like starting out with a drum loop because you don't immediately have the pressure of having to write a good melody. So percussion is always a good way to start a song. So um, does everyone uh, remember how to start out with creating a new pattern? Everyone have their Game Boy turned on, ready to go? I'll just wait for everyone to uh, get ready. Let me take a quick sip of water. Because I'm going to show you how to input notes, edit, um, edit instruments, and we're going to create our first drum loop using at least two instruments. So think snare drum and hi-hat, or snare drum and kick drum, or toms, whatever. So, everyone ready? Okay, so on the song screen, uh, you go to an empty row, Plus press A twice to create a new pattern. Then hold select and press right. And then you come into the chain, so, uh, chain uh, segment. Is that still everybody keeping up? Cool. We repeat the same process again by pressing A twice, holding select and tapping right. And here you can start uh, writing down notes. So, let me create a quick loop. You already know, notice uh, if I start putting in notes, uh, you hear the clicking of the independent notes, but they're so stretched out that you can't really tell the difference between the notes. So what you can do is you can highlight your instrument, and again, hold select, press right, and now you're in the instrument screen. The instrument screen can be a bit daunting at first, but don't worry, you don't need to pay too much attention uh, to everything that's on screen. The most important thing is that you have your instrument type set to the appropriate channel. So right now we're working in the noise channel. That means that we have a noise type instrument. And you can edit that by pressing A and pressing left and right. So let's find the noise, there we go. So if you're familiar with basic synthesis, you'll probably uh, recognize the envelope. Basically, uh, the envelope is the volume at which a note is played and how long it takes for it to fade out. Uh, LSDJ works with uh, hexadecimal counting, which con confused the fuck out of me when I started out, but it's not that difficult. Basically, it goes from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, up to 9. Then from 9, it goes to A, B, C, D, E, F. And from that, you go to 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2. Uh, you'll get to know it as soon if you start working with the software for it. So with the envelope, uh, yes, oh, uh, my guy. <laughs> uh, one quick question about, about type, which is on noise now. Um, we created a, a noise uh, pattern, right? At the beginning, at the song screen. Yes. If I change it to wave, does it mean it will um, uh, make a wave? sound, a uh, waveform sound, or pulse sound, sorry, inside the nose, uh, noise? Um, it's, not, it's, it's not really possible because uh, the, the different channels have different technical capabilities. Yes. So the wave channel can pretty much produce uh, a lot of waveforms, but the pulse channel only produces pulse waves. So if I change it to pulse, it, it means I'll switch the row uh, uh, horizontally on the left, on the song side of this menu, or am I totally lost here? <laughs> <laughs> if you, you've lost me. No, I don't, I don't quite understand your question. Like so you on, on your the first screen, on the song screen, you yeah? have a, a, a horizontal row yeah, yeah. with pulse, pulse, wave and noise. We created a new instrument or a sound on the noise screen, right? And while I'm in there, in the instrument screen, I can change the instru instrument from noise to pulse. Yes. Does that mean it will change the, the block on the sound menu to 
the one I chose? No, it'll, it'll, uh, the note data will stay in the channel that you created it in. Okay. Uh, it'll, it just, it'll just be that the channel doesn't know how to play your instrument, ah, so okay. it will sound messed up, which can be fun, by the way. I will encourage you guys to maybe try and, and use uh, the, the wave instrument in a false channel and just go all Einstein on it, okay. or Frankenstein, rather. No, that's... <laughs> <laughs> Frankenstein was the monster, guys. Anyway, I uh, hope that answers yeah, your question. Yeah, thanks. Cool. So, um, getting back to the envelope, the first, um, first number or letter determines the, uh, at which volume your note is played. The second one changes the duration. So zero, uh, on the second number, which you can uh, change by pressing left and right, uh, if you change that to A1 and you press start to play your loop, you will notice that we created a hi-hat. So I'll just show you the, the instrument data that I created. Um, so what I want to uh, have you guys do is create two types of instruments. You can create a new instrument by uh, highlighting the instrument column, pressing A twice. And then uh, you can also um, all the, uh, you can also cycle between existing instruments by holding A and pressing left or right or up or down. So I'm going to create a quick loop uh, using two instruments. So this is our hi-hat, which you can create by just shortening the notes. So you set it to A1, or if you set it to 5-1, it'll play softer. Uh, so let's keep it on 7-1 for now. And to create a snare drum or a kick drum, the easiest method is to use the shape. Uh, I wish I could give you a bit more of a technical explanation of the channel, but basically I can, the only thing I can say is you change variable, sound changes. There you go, it's magic. So going into the second instrument that we created, what we're going to do is, we're, again, we're going to shorten the note, but this time we're going to set it to, let's say, 6-2. So it's a bit longer than the hi-hat that we had. And what you'll notice is if I uh, set the shape down, let's say, two, three ticks uh, to FC, and I play it, you'll have created a snare drum. So uh, with that knowledge, uh, I want you guys to spend a couple of minutes getting familiar with inputting notes, changing variables, creating instruments and stuff. And if you have any questions, I'll be walking around and I'll uh, explain uh, uh, if you ever get lost, okay? And if you, if you want any help, just raise your hand and I'll rush over. I've only just noticed that I didn't even teach you guys how to <laughs> get rid of notes if you input a wrong note. So let's say you want to get rid of one note. What you do is you hold B and you press A. And what that does is it cuts the note. So it's still stored somewhere. Um, LSDJ has a cut, uh, copy and uh, paste function. So if you cut a note, so you held B and you pressed A, what you can do is you can paste it back in by holding select and pressing A. And uh, once we get to the pulse, uh, pulse channels, I'll explain to you how to copy portions of your song, import them into other uh, phrases, and just uh, show you ways how to improve your workflow. So everyone, uh, having an okay time inputting notes so far? Okay. So the best part always of this is hearing hearing the, the audio bleed from, from the different headsets to hear what everyone is up, <laughs> up to. <laughs> okay, so... Um, I want to I wanna teach you guys a quick trick uh, on how to solo play channels because uh, let's go back to the song screen and I'll uh, one thing by the way if you uh, press start and and press start again and your song doesn't stop uh, you've activated the live mode on your Game Boy so if you go back to the song screen pay attention to the left hand corner of the screen if you press select left it'll switch to live mode so what live mode is is it, it allows you to trigger different um, different chains. Uh, so you can basically see it as like an Ableton push launch pad or whatever. 
uh, but that will keep your song on loop. So if you want to fix that, just go to the song screen, hold select, press left, and make sure it's set to song, and then you can just start and stop your song using the start button. Now, one thing that you'll run into if you want to play a channel solo, and let's say for an intro perhaps, um, if you go to the song screen and you press start, it'll start all the channels at once. So you, you can't say, well, I want to have this one start out first and then I want to have these channels uh, coming in later. Um, so what you can do is you can create an empty phrase. I always choose the, the highest number because there's no way that you're going to create such a complex song uh, to get to that number eventually, although I'll, I'll gladly challenge you if, it take, if you want to take the challenge. So what you can do is uh, put down like a 7F, again press select right to get in there, create another phrase that's the same, like at the very, the very highest value, press select and write, and in the command uh, line you can press a and cycle between a lot of letters and put down a K on the very first row. We'll get into the effects uh, and commands a bit later, but basically what this does is the K command kills uh, the notes that are played in that channel. So um, let's say we've input uh, rows for all the channels. If I press start, you'll see it plays all the channels, but this time we don't, but now we don't have audio in the other channels, so uh, if we compose a song, uh, it'll play in sync. Um, something else that I want to get out of the way, my, I'm, still wor pretty <laughs> I'm working still on the format uh, exactly for this workshop, but if you want to save yourself a lot of trouble writing a really long song, um, what I usually do is I put in four phrases in one chain, which basically means you have four bars uh, playing that section. So Let's say you want to have a, uh, an intro for four bars. You need to make sure that the same amount of rows are present in every channel. Because if you have three rows here and uh, four rows in another one, it'll desync. And that can cause a lot of confusion when you're starting out. So now we have the, we have the loop running and as you'll see, it's still sticking to the noise channel because we have one left, less row input. Okay. Sorry if this is a little chaotic for you guys, but let's move on to the, uh, the Pulse channel. So, um, what you can do is, uh, we'll create a new chain in the Pulse channel on the third row. That way we can uh, press play on the, on the Pulse channel and not have to worry about the rest of the channels. So again, create a new chain, pressing A twice. Going in by using select right, creating a new chain, and let's just repeat that same chain four times. Go in, and it still looks exactly the same, like all the, uh, the knowledge that you've uh, worked up until now uh, is appropriate for all the channels. Uh, things start to get different when you start inputting notes. Suddenly we have melodies. So if we go into the instrument screen for a pulse instrument, you'll notice that a couple of things have changed. Again, most of these things you'll, you'll don't have to use right away, but I want to uh, guide your attention to the, the wave parameter. So I was talking about uh, pulse waves. Basically, uh, any waveform has a duty cycle. So it goes through the waveform and then it cycles, so it repeats again. Um, and you have uh, the option of uh, choosing four different waveforms, but uh, the last one sounds the same as the second. So what I'll do to demonstrate is I'll create a simple couple of notes. And again, we can use the envelope to shorten the note. Press uh, start to play. Now listen closely uh, what happens if I change the waveform. So you can, you have a little bit of wiggle room to design your sound in the pulse channel. 
Uh, there are some more advanced ways uh, to give it a, a bit of more of a unique twist, but we'll get to those eventually. So, um, if, you feel, if you feel ready for it, uh, you can start writing your first melodies. Um, one thing I will tell you guys up front is, let's say you want to have, like, uh, to create a bit more of a dynamic feel. I think we're all ready uh, to uh, discuss the command line for a bit. So, if I have this short note, and I want to alternate uh, with a longer note, I can do two things. I can create a new, uh, a new instrument, uh, but that's kind of a hassle because you have to switch menus all the time. So what you can do is you can go to the command line, and the command line contains a lot of effects, uh, some of which I've noted on the cheat sheet. Most of them you'll not want to use for, uh, for now. Um, but I want to uh, introduce you to the E command. So E stands for envelope, which if you paid attention, you recognized on the instrument screen as well. So what you can do is you can, let's say, create a E65. So in the instrument, I originally had um, A3. So let's change that to A2 just to show the difference. And if I oh, and if I play these two, uh, let this let this loop play. You'll notice that the the uh, envelope in the command line overwrites the one that you have in your instrument. So uh, this way you can save yourself a lot of trouble. Uh, so, because you don't have to go in and out of menus. Um, let's see, I think this is also a good time to show you the, the, the copy function, which is extremely useful if you want to repeat portions of your song. So, while holding select, you can press B once and let go of select. And once you move, you'll notice that you can highlight different portions of your phrase. So let's say we want to copy these four rows. What I do is I press B, and then I, want, I go to the place with my cursor that I want to copy the note data. I hold select and press A. And if I do that several times, you see I've copied the first section and spread it all over the, this bar. Um, if you feel up for it, you can uh, try your hands at different commands. Uh, the one that I would recommend is the, the W command which allows you to change the waveform. So what you can do is have a different waveform set on other rows. Copy that. So this already gives you some tools to start writing music really quickly. So uh, if anyone has any questions up till now, if, if I've gone a little bit too fast, I feel like I'm, I'm really rushing through it, so if I go a little bit too fast, please do let me know. Does anyone have a question up till now? Everyone's busy looking at their screens, that's a good thing. <laughs> He's still alive. <laughs> Do you want to borrow uh, like my earbuds? That'll make composing a lot easier. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. if you press start, it'll go through your loop.
Thank you. <laughs> no problem. I should probably emphasize that. Start is play. That's a pretty important <laughs> part of making music. <laughs> Okay, so I've been thinking a little bit about how to make this workshop work for the live stream as well as make the most of this for you guys. So what I'm thinking is I'll go through the material that we want to discuss a little bit quicker uh, and then I can give you guys a full like two hours of making music personally and I'll just be walking around uh, and it probably won't be interesting for the live stream. So. Um, uh, what we'll do is we'll discuss the rest of the material and then I'll give you guys full room to either ask questions or I can demonstrate workflow um, and we can uh, discuss uh, like specific things. So one thing I uh, already want to, um, I want to give a bit of advice because I hear a lot of, lot of music, uh, demo scene, chip tune, whatever. Uh, and one of the problems that are that people tend to run into when they start making out music on the Game Boy is well, it's not necessarily a problem. It's a pet peeve that I have. Um, some people um, compose really, really good music, but they have very stale sound design. So what I mean by that is they'll have the same notes playing different, uh, well, they'll have the same instruments play different notes. So they won't adjust the length of the note, they won't, dis, uh, the, they won't adjust the volume. And I want to give you guys a quick demonstration uh, of how to make the most of this very limited piece of tech. Because the Game Boy is very limited in what it does, but you can use a lot of simple tricks to make your composition more interesting. The one thing that I always uh, think when, I th uh, when I'm making chiptune is how can I fool people into thinking there's more to the system than there actually is. And a good way to do that is uh, panning, for example, or the different uh, waveforms that I've already discussed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a quick and dirty uh, melody. And what we're going to do is we're going to use one instrument, just one instrument. And I'll show you guys how easy it is to create a more dynamic loop just filling in every empty spot that you have. So let's get rid of all the notes. There we go, easy enough. So, easy melody, um, but already you can tell it sounds kind of stale. So, what we can do is, uh, I really like uh, panning notes, which uh, panning is using stereo uh, left and right. The, the Game Boy, uh, just like Amiga, only has hard panning, so it's either all the way to the left or all the way to the right. Uh, which can be a bit uh, hard on the ears if you're listening to chiptune music on headphones. But uh, it can be a really good way to uh, improve your production overall. So the panning command is the O command. And you'll notice that it gives you a little left and right function. So what we can do is we can highlight the R, copy that to second segment. Let's use it very sparingly because you'll you'll get a bit of clicking in LSDJ. So it doesn't sound like too much uh, of a difference, but let's um, try and get some dynamics in the volumes as well. 
So going to the E command, if you change the second number to something higher than 8, it goes from a decaying note to an attack note. So it reverses uh, the, the volume generation or decay. So what we can do is we can start a note at a very low volume, give it a very slow buildup just to see how it goes. Okay, so I like this one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, for every count, like the one, two, three, four, I'm gonna make the note fade in. So you can already tell it's starting to feel a lot more lively, a lot more polished, so to say, and we're not even done too much to the song. So if we also uh, maybe throw in some different waveforms, like we had previously. So now it creates the illusion that there are like several notes played, but all it does is it plays one note, then switches to a different waveform, but it creates the illusion that there's more notes being played. So there's a lot more going on, and once you start stacking up these different commands, you really challenge the listener, so they'll have to take more time to take in all the sound design, which creates more attention for your song, which is something you want. You want people to pay attention for your music. So lastly, uh, let's put in, I like using a, a W uh, or a V command, which is vibrato. Uh, and if everyone understands what vibrato means? Okay, Eric in the back going, mm -hmm. uh, So. I always try and explain it this way. Think of a uh, like a guitar player, and uh, you know when they when they uh, loosen up or uh, tighten the uh, the snare the, the yeah the snare that they play like that's basically the effect of a vibrato. You take a bass note, and it starts to wiggle for a bit. So um, you can input a V command. Hi, Bacter. <laughs> There's a Game Boy up front for if you want one. Uh, does anyone know where the cheat sheets went, by any chance? Back there, if you can take a cheat sheet, it has some information on there. Uh, I'm, I'm rushing through the, uh, the info for a bit, uh, back there, but uh, at the end I'll give you guys a bit more time to just figure out the stuff. So, uh, vibrato. Um, I mostly use that for longer notes, because if you have a note playing longer, it really emphasizes that vibrato. So what I might do is actually switch out that W command, put it over here. So it's very subtle that you can already hear the small bend in the first note being played. Let's make it a bit more obnoxious. Okay, so we've used, let's see, one, two, three, three different instruments. Uh, and these, I fall back on these uh, commands all the fucking time, like all, all the time. And it's, I just want to tell everyone, it's not, it doesn't have to be difficult to polish your sound. Like some people can get really um, intimidated uh, ha with having to uh, go back and edit their, their sounds, but I can tell you, like, play around with it, and once you hit that sweet spot on that vibrato and that one note, man, you'll feel on top of the world. So, um, yeah, that's the, that's the Pulse channel. Uh, what I'll do now is, I'll put this here for now, and I'll move over to the Wave channel, uh, and after we discuss the Wave channel, uh, what I've done during the previous uh, two workshops that I've hosted, I've demonstrated workflow, like uh, creating a loop featuring all the channels and describing uh, the train of thought that comes with it when producing music. So if people are interested, I'll, uh, I'll do that, and otherwise we'll just uh, go straight in on, uh, on the Wave channel and uh, really dive into that. So. We can create a new uh, chain by pressing A twice. 
This should be familiar by now. Press A, or press select right to go into the chain. Double tap A, press select right, and we we're in, in our phrase. And once we start inputting instruments here, you can already tell it's a nice and bassy sound. Uh, the wave channel is used often to create um, synthesized drum samples and uh, bass lines because you have a lot more flexibility with your sound. The, the, the pulse channel can be used for, for bass lines, but it's just not deep enough, you know, it really doesn't dig into the lower frequencies. So we'll create a new instrument and seems easy enough if you go into the instrument screen, but once you press select up, this is your... In this is your uh, this is your entire uh, synthesizer. So um, people uh, the people that have used the synthesizer to build sounds before will will recognize some of the uh, some of the terms. Oh, don't not to block the screen. So you have your your waveform. You have your filters, which is like low pass, uh, high pass, band pass. Uh, you have your volume cutoff, phase, V shift. Uh, these are all very complicated terms, and I have a bit of a confession to make. Every time that I program uh, wave channels, I have no idea what I'm doing. Like, I don't know what any of this means. So what I tend to do is I just switch between variables and every once in a while you get deafened by, by an instrument that c becomes obnoxiously loud. But um, it can be really fun to play around and just find that sweet spot for your bass line or create this really like uh, touching emotional melody using the wave channel. So, um, but for now, uh, I want to uh, have you guys go to the instrument screen. And uh, because if you play a simple bass line, what you'll notice is it sounds a bit shit, the default uh, setting. It's like really, really crunchy and a bit like, like weird. Like the wave channel seems to have woken up with a bigger hangover than anyone in this room. But uh, we have a quick fix for that. So it, once we've input some notes, this is how it sounds when you create a new standard instrument. Right, it kind of grows on you, the sound. But uh, we can fix it by going into the instrument and uh, setting the play uh, option from once to manual. And then all of a sudden, you have a lot more, or a bit more of a crisp bass line sound. Let's raise it one octave. Da -na 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 -na. Da -na -na. Okay, sorry. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, another big uh, difference with the wave channel is I talked about the, the uh, less flexibility in the volume. Uh, if you go into the instrument, what you'll see is it has Volumes, a volume setting of three. So you have zero, which is playing nothing at all, one, playing it very softly, two, playing it a bit louder, three, playing it as loud as possible. And that's all the flexibility you have. Um, but it doesn't have to be a bad thing. In fact, you can create uh, some uh, good uh, sidechain compression emulation by using these three volume commands. If I say uh, sidechain compression, do people know what I'm talking about? Okay, a couple of people uh, don't know. So, I really like this example. Uh, do you know that Eric Preetz song, the, the one Call On Me, where you have the really loud kick drum and uh, the vocals going, Call On Me! And every time the kick drum comes in, uh, the vocals get uh, really low in volume and gradually build back up again. So, uh, one of the, that's called, uh, compression, like every time the kick drum comes in, the vocals will uh, be lowered in volume to create like more room for the kick drum to play. So when the kick drum leaves, it and the vocals ramp back up again. So you get this call on me. That's the example that I always try and explain to people. So um, let's create, well, obviously <laughs> if you're using Ableton, or Fruity Loops, or any like good piece of tech to write music, um, you can just throw in a compressor, set the side change, who I want it influenced by that channel. None of that. 
Uh, in fact, one of the more fun things about making music on the Game Boy is you really have to pay attention to the sounds that you're crafting. And it can teach you uh, sound design in a pretty good way. So what we'll do here is we'll have uh, a bass line note play, and we can have an E3 or E0. So let's have it gradually increase from three back to one, two, three. Oh. So we've not mu done much to the channel and already this creates a very, you know, cool dynamic feel. So um, if you want to start editing uh, your synthesizer, what you can do is you can program some of your notes and you just press play, go into your instrument, go to your synthesizer. So if you are on this instrument screen for your wave channel, hold select, press up and that'll bring you to the synthesizer screen. If you want to get really crazy, and I'm looking at you, Bacter, what you can do is you can press select left and you can actually draw your own waveform. So say you want to have that, that you want to draw out your own modulation, you can do that. Uh, just want to give you the option. I never use this. I always, I like uh, playing the more adventurous type, just going into the synthesizer and changing things around. So if I hit play, I can, for example, change the waveform. So this is a square wave. This is a, is that a sawtooth, I think? Um, but let's stay with, uh, oh no, this, so this is a saw and the other is a triangle, I think. Um, so let's stick with the saw for now. We can change the filter. It doesn't actually give too many interesting results, but that's okay. Um, so, Two of the th main things that I start uh, playing around really early on is the volume and the cutoff. So if I change the volume up a bit, you'll notice it gets a bit of a different texture and then just change the cutoff a bit. So what I'm noticing is I actually forgot to explain something. Um, you can set the length of your waveform and the speed uh, at which it plays through it. So you have uh, your synth, the play option, and then you have length, repeat, and speed. So length is set to the max, to F, but what we can do is we can set our speed to something like two, and it'll play through the, the waveform a lot faster. So let's, oh, well, but we'll have to set it back to once. That's, so if you want uh, an easy bass line, just set it to manual and you don't have to do you don't have to do too much. If you want to play around a bit more, set it to once. Let's see how this sounds. Not too good. Let's let's change that for a bit. So uh, that's pretty much the wave channel. It's, it can be a little bit daunting at first and a little bit complicated, but once you get to grips with starting to make simple sounds and really expanding on how to make your modulation sounds good, it'll make sense at the end. Trust me, if I can do it, you can do it. So um, there's another function in the wave channel that I haven't mentioned yet, and it's a really nice feature to have. Uh, the wave channel has sample playback. So what we can do is we create a new instrument, and instead of having a wave instrument, we can set it to kit. So some of you might already be familiar with these terms, or these. Uh, these are basically samples that come preloaded with LSDJ, and you'll notice we have two note columns now, and if we input notes, we have like ultra compressed samples in there. 
So if you want like a, a bit of a more, I don't, I don't really recommend this because it, it doesn't tend to sound good if you use the wave channel just for percussion. But what you can do is you can just create a simple uh, drum loop using the wave channel. Let's create a new new house banger. Oh, that's it. Oh, okay. I forgot to actually copy the instrument data. Let's get one clap in there. So this can be fun, just, you know, you have your own pocket drum computer, which is pretty cool. Uh, but you can also, for example, think in something like vocal uh, samples. So uh, this is probably the best part of, of preloaded LSDJ. It comes with animal sounds. So you can have your cat, your dog. This is really good for trap music, by the way. Like every time I hear like a trap banger, I always think they s just sample a lot of dogs like roof, roof, instead of some big alpha guys going, hey. but anyway. So you have duck, my favorite. Um, but you can also, if you want a bit more, you know, like a footwork production and you want to have some really cool ghetto samples in there, you have your good old classics like ass or... So there are some <laughs> preloaded samples that you can play around with. Um, really quickly, some people get confused by this, but the first uh, kit is your column on the left, and then the second one is the column on your right. So I'm just saying that in case anyone gets confused. Um, so with that said, that's basically the, the, the basic knowledge that you need for LSDJ to start writing your own music. Uh, would anyone be interested in like seeing workflow demonstrated, like see how a composition comes together? Or this is, this is the, the hard part of the workshop, like, I wish I could, but I can't teach you music. Like, it's something that you just have to play around with and spend some time on, uh, really pay attention to the stuff that you listen to. Like, what makes this fun for me? Like, is this just this really uh, well-programmed kick drum or a really catchy melody or some nice, like, polish? Like, s sometimes I hear a, a track and I can't figure out why I like it right on the spot. Like. I've I only find out after I listen like five times, like, oh, there's this, there's this really subtle like choir in the background and I really like that, or I really like the progression in, in this melody, or I really like that drum fill. So if you want to learn music, the best way to do it is just write music. I actually saw a really uh, good like uh, uh, graphic on Facebook, which is like the difference between an aspiring writer and a writer is writing. It's as simple as that. So if you want to make music, Make music, and you don't have to put pressure on yourself to make something good. I spent eight years trying to uh, get better at this, and I still feel like I have a lot to learn. So just have fun with it, and I'll try and demonstrate that a, a bit for you today. So let's create a new file. And uh, like I said, I mostly start out with uh, percussion, just to get a feel for uh, the rhythm that I'm composing to. So I go into the noise channel, create uh, a simple drum loop of four bars, create a new instrument, uh, and I mostly start out with uh, some nice hi-hat rattles. So let's see. That's way too fast. If you want to, uh, if you want to edit the B, uh, BPM, I forget, I forget uh, to mention this. What you can do is you can go to the song screen, press select up, and that'll bring you to uh, the settings menu. So you can uh, save your files or load different song data, uh, and you can also change the BPM. So what I like to do is I like to make a bit more like slow, groovy uh, tracks. So let's create. It's, uh, it's all, currently the, the, the rhythm or groove that I have is r very robotic, like. 
It almost sounds like an intro to some Gabber song or something. So what I want to do is I want to create a bit, little bit of swing, you know, have some uh, hats delayed. So what I can do is I could go select down and it will bring me to the groove screen. And um, I really have a hard time explaining this, but basically um, the two sixes represent the um, amount of ticks which, can, which you can s s view as time spent on that row. So if I increase the first row to seven and the second row to five, what it will do basically is it'll play the first row longer than it'll play the second row. And this will create a sort of swing. So if I compare it to what it was, you can already tell it's a lot more like groovy. So let's start uh, adding some snare drums. I'm not sure where to stand, <laughs> not to block the screen too much. And maybe have like a... The noise channel isn't really suited to create kick drums, but we're going to try and reach down into the, uh, the very uh, small or lower frequencies by changing the shape a bit. Oh, that's good. If I shorten this. So it's not the best kick drum that you'll hear, but it's, it's a start. And uh, the, the, uh, the drums already sound a bit stale, so let's say we liven it up a little bit. So let's, for example, make this one this hi-hat here fade in. And we can make this one a bit longer just to, you know how a hi-hat opens and closes so we can lengthen and shorten the envelope to create like an open and a closed hi-hat. Oh, that's actually the snare drum. <laughs> okay, so that'll work for now. So now we have a bit more of an idea of what we actually want to compose. So let's uh, start writing some background melodies. I usually put my background melodies in the Pulse Channel 2 because Pulse Channel 1 has some extra sweep features. So if you want uh, that extra bit of capabilities to do some more uh, complicated programming, it's good to do like the simpler stuff in Pulse Channel 2. So, let's see. That works for now. I like those writing those like funky little pieces of music. Okay, so already this sounds like complete shit because we have way too long notes. So let's go into uh, our instrument and start editing it for a bit. Uh, what I can actually show you is there is, this is a bit more advanced, but I can help you with this uh, when the live stream shuts off. Uh, uh, what we can do is we have tables. And tables are a thing that I avoided for the first two years that I made music on Game Boy. And looking back on it, I wish I just faced my fears and picked it up as soon as I started, because this is a very, very powerful tool to make even like very simple pulse instruments sound incredibly lively. So what you have is, instead of one, you have two command rows, which uh, can be extremely useful because if I input like a vibrato on the very first row and play it, oh, 
I already have like having those notes bent back and forth a little bit can make them feel a lot more lively. What uh, another trick that I follow on a lot is what I do is I have the first row of the wave. Well, actually, I should probably explain what's going on here. So if I press play, you'll notice that the cursor really cycles really quickly through uh, through the table. Uh, so it plays all these rows in rapid succession, but all the rows just consist of uh, transposing, effects, volume control. So you don't really, uh, you can input notes here, but it's mostly used for stacking effects to create a more lively instrument. So what I do here is I start the wave channel at, uh, I think this is called a 25 duty cycle, and then immediately switch it to a 12 and a half duty cycle. And what that creates, a bit more of a snappy instrument. And if you want to uh, make sure that it doesn't uh, play or loop this section, what you can do is put in an A command, because A refers to another table, and just put in FF, because this is, ta this is a table that will never exist. So if I play now, the cursor won't loop the entire section and it'll just cut off here. So that'll, that doesn't uh, make the instruments loop in a very awkward way. Um, let's see. Uh, so now we've, uh, we've set a couple of, hello, do you, let's see. I think I have, oh, I, have I think I have a Game Boy still over here. Uh, no, I don't. Okay. Uh, this might not be the most convenient uh, Game Boy to use. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm rushing through a bit more of an advanced uh, part of the, the seminar, but uh, afterwards I'll give you guys like an hour or two hours to just work the music for yourself and uh, I'll help you out for a bit. Um, so with the, that table created, we have the entire commands row still available for effects. So what we can do again is we can create like uh, a couple of longer notes here. Oh. doesn't really stand out too much, but... This, see, I, w I was planning on making this note shorter, and then I noticed that it's, it sounds a lot better when it's longer. And you'll find in music that there are a lot of happy accidents. You know, like, you'll be, uh, you'll be uh, editing a loop, and you're actually like, oh, this sounds much better than what I thought. And I would say, go with it. Like, just... Let the, let the music guide you wherever it takes you. Let's see, let's make this really short. Okay, so this will do for now. Let's not spend too much time on that. Actually, um, if you listen to a lot of like dub or ska or like low tempo chill, chill music, um, they mostly have like uh, uh, one chord, one chord, like dun, 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 dun. So what we can do is we can create something called arpeggios. Uh, arpeggios are another interesting thing of working around the limitations of the Game Boy because a Game Boy only has three uh, melodic notes that you can play at any given time. So think of having a keyboard in front of you and only having three fingers uh, that can only strike one note at a time. Good luck with that. So. Uh, some really clever people discovered uh, that uh, how about instead of having three notes play at the same time, we uh, sequence three notes and cycle through them really quickly because that creates the illusion of striking a chord. So let's figure out where we can place those. Let's see, I think this would be a good spot. And what we can do is put down a C command and a C command is also noted on your cheat sheet. Uh, I don't think you've, you've received a cheat sheet yet. If uh, someone has one, <laughs> cheat sheets a bunch. <laughs> okay, so uh, the, the C command uh, is basically an arpe arpeggiator. <laughs> Damn cheat sheets. Uh, <laughs> um, it's basically an arpeggiator. So what I'm doing now is I'm giving it a C command 
And these two numbers represent the amount of semitones uh, that uh, are sequenced after it. So if I play it now, you'll notice that we have a chord all of a sudden. Oh, I did put it in the wrong spot though. That's a bit of a shame. Oh, that took long enough. Okay, there we go. <laughs> I'm messing up a bit and uh, I immediately... Uh, it's There's no undo function on the Game Boy, so if you're gonna do an action, you better be committed because you're not getting that the, the previous state of your save file back. So let's stick with this messy melody for now. What we can do, uh, now that we have like a melodic reference, we can start writing a bass line. So it doesn't have to be too complicated, but first, um, one thing that the noise uh, or the wave channel is really good for is creating synthetic drums. So I already demonstrated how you can create drums using samples, uh, but you can also use a table to create your own uh, kick drum. So, um, this is another uh, good instance where I learned a little bit about uh, sound design without really realizing it. Wh uh, basically, if you want to uh, create a kick drum using synthesis, what you do is you create a high note, a high bass note, um, say octave five or six, and you pitch it down really f quickly, and what you get... Oh, if you don't have the table screw you over. So if I sequence a couple of notes here, and all of a sudden, we have a kick drum. Uh, let's actually sequence it in a, in a way that complements the rhythm. Okay, so we're getting somewhere. Uh, so now we have all this space to put in our bass line. So let's create a new instrument, uh, create a new synthesizer, uh, have it... I'm just doing this out of my head to do it as quickly as possible. Uh, have it fade in a little bit over here. What if we do this? So now we have a bass line, uh, we have our percussion section, uh, I don't think we... Let's, let's make the bass line a little bit more clean. That's already better. Let's try a different waveform. So the triangle is really good for having like really deep uh, uh, frequencies. I like the saw tooth a little bit better. Let's see. Yeah, okay, let's stick with this for now. Uh, now, the most fun part of the entire composition, writing solos! I know Bacter will uh, 
like this as much. Uh, let's see. So we create another um, another chain, another phrase. So let's find the good starting place for our solo. Uh, have this pitch down, creating sort of a legato. no sense. Let's see. Okay, I really don't like the last sequence of that, so let's get rid of that. Yeah, you could do a lot more with uh, editing some, throwing some panning in there, adding some envelopes, but you get the idea. So uh, that's the frame of mind that I try to create music from. Like I start with percussion, maybe work towards a bass, or maybe I have a background melody in my head, and from there I just see wherever uh, wherever it leads, I'll be going. So um, that's all for the the like presentation aspect of this. I suggest uh, that we, uh, you guys spend some time with the Game Boy, get familiar with it. If you have any questions, uh, raise your hand and I'll help you out. And uh, I think for the live stream, it won't be really interesting uh, watching anymore, but yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so thank you at least for staying awake during the presentation uh, part of this. And I hope you have a bit of fun with the Game Boys and thanks again for coming out. So. All right, so get to making music, all of you. <laughs> work, work. What's up? Uh, I don't think I need a microphone. Steve voice screen is not that Let's see, it could be the, the... Oh, so what you did is you adjusted the contrast. Oh, <laughs> so uh, the, you have one, uh, one side that's the contrast and the other one is the volume. So it should be visible now. And if it's, not, if it's not clear enough, you can try and play with the contrast to stand it out a bit more. <laughs> Thanks for coming out, Ace Man. <laughs> What's that? Oh, yeah, well, I've never I've never actually tested it on an Easy Flash. So you could try it out. Let me know if the if the sound sounds okay because some some cartridges tend to have some sound issues. So um, oh, uh, yeah, that, that might be another good thing uh, to discuss for a bit. So, the Game Boys that I gave you uh, have two uh, different cartridges. Well, I've, I've passed out two different kinds of cartridges. Basically, we have uh, our Benven El Cheapos and we have EMS cards. The EMS cards are the black ones and the, the green one is uh, uh, the El Cheapo. The El Cheapo is really nice because it has a, a mini SD slot. So uh, with the EMS, you had this really s sketchy piece of software that didn't run on anything past Windows XP. So it can be a really, a real hassle to get it running. 
Uh, so the mini SD card is really nice to have. I did have a couple of cartridges that has some performance issues, but uh, overall it's pretty doable. Uh, these are the most common, the EMS cards. And uh, basically um, they will set you back about, I think, 50, 50 euros or something. So, um, and they're mostly reliable. However, please know that we're dealing with very sketchy hardware. Like this, this, this device wasn't made for making music. So save, uh, save your saves and back up your cartridge as often as you can. As soon as you get done writing some music, transfer over the save file to your PC because I've had several instances where I was composing music and I was really proud and all of a sudden I shaked my Game Boy a little bit too, uh, too hard and uh, uh, my entire song was corrupted and it was unusable, unfixable. So um, be very careful when you're composing music and don't trust the hardware for one bit. So, um, not necessarily, well what it does is LSDJ, if you turn off your Game Boy, uh, it saves it. Uh, on the on the I don't know technology when, uh, basically once you turn it off and turn it back on again your song will still be there however if you want to create a new song you'll have to save it on the cartridge uh, and that'll create a save slot and then you can create a, or then you can load an empty slot and start writing new music in that so um, regarding where to get those cartridges uh, if you're interested in buying one, uh, I have a list of verified web shops that I've used in the past. Unfortunately, I've, I've received a couple of emails from people uh, telling me about um, some other web shops that they found and they emailed me like, Hey, uh, do you know how long it takes to deliver? I, did, I ordered mine three months ago and it's still not here. And sad, sadly, a couple of people have been scammed. So. Uh, Either contact me uh, if you need to have a page verified or contact Tronimal because he uh, can uh, probably sell them to you more, a bit more directly. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to say about that, I think. Uh, and uh, regarding uh, a Game Boy, like for using it uh, with LSDJ, you don't have to modify it. Like uh, the, a couple of the Game Boys that I have have a backlight built into it or a different sound output. But you can basically run a LSDJ on Game Boy Classic, Game Boy Pocket, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advanced, Game Boy Advanced SP. I wouldn't recommend you use the, the, the Game Boy Advanced because the button layout is a bit inconvenient because uh, the start and select button are on the far left of the Game Boy. So you constantly have to switch over and have your uh, hands in an awkward position. But the Game Boy Advanced SP works really nicely. However, uh, that requires like this stupid fucking adapter thing uh, that plugs into the power in on, on the Game Boy. I still don't know why Nintendo thought this was a good idea. Probably it's like an Apple move. But it's, um, it's uh, once you have that plug, it's still a very good system to use because it's a bit uh, faster and a bit more powerful than the Game Boy Classic. Uh, I would recommend you stick to the Game Boy Classic because it has the best bass and the loudest output. So surprisingly, the oldest model is still the very best model. So, yeah, that's me do uh, done talking for now. Where, where can I find the, the safe? Basically those, those cartridges, uh, the EMS cartridges, uh, have two pages where you can uh, load ROMs to. Uh, however, that can mean that you, you switch between the pages by turning the Game Boy off uh, and not on to really read quick. Uh, yes, there is. You can't, you can't put mul multiple save files on there. Um, I should probably show it uh, because you when you save a song in LSDJ, it doesn't save it as a separate file on the cartridge. 
So uh, basically the save file that you have on your cartridge is the save file for uh, the entire, uh, the all, it lists all the songs on there. So there is no way to really to another cartridge for example, but um, it's not really necessary. It's, it's, it can be a bit uh, annoying if you're doing a DJ set like I have and you have different songs on different cartridges. But there are uh, images for uh, to work around that. So, yeah, just just view the the, the save file as a, a memory for the entire cartridge, so to say, if that makes sense. No, that I that I do not know, unfortunately. Are you talking a bit more about uh, like the the specific loading sequence, like the lot more technical uh, aspects of the? Yeah, I wish I could answer that question. Unfortunately, I don't know how that works. Uh, all I know is uh, I've I've never really had to dig in more to that aspect of the Game Boy. However, if you uh, Google or ask around, I'm sure there are some developers uh, that have worked with the Game Boy before, like Ben Venn, for example. Uh, the sale guy for the El Cheapo cartridge, he's really into making modified uh, parts for the Game Boy, and he has a lot of programming skills as well. So if you can, you maybe you can contact him if you really want to know for is it like for developing specific uh, applications or something for or homebrew th uh, stuff. Right. Sometimes it works with uh, save files from which are small and which I don't have many songs on it, but sometimes are big. Right, okay. Was that for us? I don't know. Does anyone speak German? <laughs> but, um, yeah. Um, I've only had experience uh, just copying the, the save image to, to a PC, so can't help you out with that, sorry. Um, the, 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 the Game Boy, the EMS card has uh, two pages, so it can uh, store up to two ROMs, uh, and it can have individual save files, although I'm... Uh, Actually, I don't know if it is. I, I, I just load LSDJ to the both pages because I don't want to be on stage messing around with the power uh, switch to, to load the correct page. And uh, I've always had my save files trans over from one page to another. So, uh, but yeah, I don't, if you want to uh, use it more for gaming purposes, you might have to, um, uh, pay a bit more attention to that, like if you want to load the game to one p uh, side of the cartridge and then uh, have LSDJ on the other page. I wouldn't recommend it, honestly, like there are probably better cartridges uh, for gaming as well, so I'm not sure. So I would recommend, if you have an EMS card, just use it for LSDJ or Nano Loop. Well, yeah, like it, uh, from what I've noticed, it's uh, the 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 save file on the first page seems to carry over to the other page, uh, but I'm not sure. I've not really spent a lot of time experimenting with that. So, if anyone does, get back to me and let me know how that works out. Thank you for coming, Baxter. <laughs> mm. Sweet dreams. <laughs> Happy dying. <laughs> is, is, uh, did, you, did you manage to make some music? Um, yes. Can we actually? This works. This is good. Very nice. You can use it if you like it. <laughs> 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 I'm not a musician. No, neither am I. <laughs> I just, I just, I just make music. Like it's, I wouldn't call myself a musician either. But if you want, uh, are you, are you leaving or? I'm leaving. Okay. Well, thanks for coming out. And if you, if you feel like some more inspiration, like within the next hour, you can come back in and pick it back up. Thank right. Thanks for coming out, man. Which emulator? Which emulator are you using? Uh, 
Oh, that's okay. Did you uh, you got it from the USB stick, right? Oh, no. uh, I know. Um, I once programmed a game for the Game Boy and used another emulator, and later I recognized uh, what I programmed for this emulator didn't work for the real Game Boy, and the PGB is a mirror to the hardware. Right. Yeah. It's it's uh, uh, it's also the best for LSDJ because it allows you to uh, BGB also allows you to make recordings of the four separate channels. So what you'd usually have to do is you would have to play a song, record one channel, uh, mute all the other channels, then do the same for the second, the third, and the fourth. So if you have a song that's three minutes long, say three, three, times, uh, three times four, that's 12, so you'd spend almost like 12 minutes just recording your song. So if you run it in, BG in the BGB emulator, you actually actually have the option to have all the uh, channels separated and record them in one in one recording. So that's really nice to have. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, this, when it's 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 so I'm really happy that I had someone modify my Game Boys because once you get to the backlight, it can be pretty dangerous. Like if you wreck the screen, it's just dead. So it can be uh, pretty tricky. Um, yeah, it's not too much. But if you can save like 20 euros, it's really nice not to have to buy a new screen. But yeah. <laughs> for the people on the stream that are checking checking in, thanks for watching. Uh, hope you pick up LSDJ. You can download the ROM on the internet. Uh, it should set you back one cent. And if you're going to run it on an emulator, use BGB because that's the most accurate one. We just discussed that, but we didn't have a mic present. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Goodbye.